Hello again. It's a pleasure to meet you at last, Mrs. Crawley. We're delighted to be here. Aren't we, Matthew? Delighted. Welcome to Downton. Thank you. You've been so kind. What a reception committee. Yes, thank you. This is Carson. We'd all be lost without him. Mama, may I present Matthew Crawley and Mrs. Crawley, my mother, Lady Grantham? What should we call each other? Well, we could always start with Mrs. Crawley and Lady Grantham. into the drawing room and we can make all the proper introductions. Thank you, guys. But why? I should far prefer to be a maid in a large and pleasant house than work from dawn till dusk in a cramped and gloomy office. Don't you agree, Carson? I do, my lady. Why are we talking about this? What does it matter? It matters that the people that live and work here are content. Of course. We should be helping Gwen if that's what she wants. I agree. Surely we must all encourage those less fortunate to improve their lot where they can. Not if it isn't in their best interests. Isn't the maid a better judge of that than we are? What do you say, Mr Pamuk? Should our housemaid be kept enslaved or forced out into the world? Why are you English so curious about other people's lives? If she wishes to leave and the law permits it, then... Let her go. Well, perhaps the law should not permit it. For the common good. So you hanker for the days of serfdom? I hanker for a simpler world. Is that a crime? Mrs Crawley, how oh, nice. You're busy. We can come back later. Mosley, what are you doing here? Are you, are you ill? Poor Mr Mosley. Uh, how's it going? The solution doesn't seem to make it any better. My imagination's running riot. I've got erysipelas, your ladyship. Oh, oh, I am sorry. Mrs Crawley tells me she's recommended nitrate of silver and tincture of steel. Well, is she making a suit of armour? But uh, I take it there's been no improvement. Not really. And you're sure it's erysipelas? That is Mrs Crawley's diagnosis. What it is to have medical knowledge. It has its uses. Mm. I see your father has been making changes at home. He has, my lady. He's got no use for the herb garden. Now my mother's gone, so he's turned it to grass. And you've been helping him? I have. Mm -hmm. Grabbing out the old rue hedge. How did he know that? Because this is not erysipelas. This is a rue allergy. If Mosley wears gardening gloves, it'll be gone in a week. Please don't think we're ungrateful for your enthusiasm, Mrs Crawley, but there comes a time when things are best left to the professionals. <laughs> and now I really, I really must go. Good day. Thank you, Your <laughs> Ladyship. You seem well prepared. They'll add a few more flowers before we open in the morning, but I think we're nearly there. Mm. Do look at Mr. Mosley's display. He's worked so hard. Rather marvellous, aren't they? Lovely. Well done, Mr. Mosley. Thank you, my lady. I think everyone needs to be congratulated. It's splendid. But do look at these roses. Have you ever seen the like? My dear, Mrs. Crawley believes I'm profiting from an unfair advantage. Oh? Mm. She feels in the past I've been given the cup merely as a matter of routine rather than merit. That's rather ungallant, Mother. I'm sure when we see Cousin Violet's roses, it'll be hard to think they could be bettered. Hard, but not impossible. You are quite wonderful the way you see room for improvement wherever you look. I never knew such reforming zeal. I take that as a compliment. I must have said it wrong. <laughs> First electricity in our telephones. 
Sometimes I feel as if I were living in a, an H.G. Wells novel. But the young are also calm about change, aren't they? Look at Matthew. I do admire him. Do you? What have I done wrong now? Oh, please. Don't pretend Mary's sudden reluctance can't be traced back to you. Well, I shall pretend it. I told her to take him. Your quarrel is with my daughter Rosamond, not me. So put that in your pipe and smoke it. <laughs> I make no apology. It would be a terrible thing if poor old Mr Molesley's son were killed, wouldn't it, Molesley? I'm sure it would, but... And then I heard William's father would be left on his own if anything happened to the boy. And what would have become of Carson if the last of his staff were to go? That's not the point. Do you want Mosley to die? Of course I don't. Well, oh. he still dresses the man from the Prudential, I see. Yes, it's nice to have someone from the real world, isn't it? Are you going up to the house to welcome the Queen of Sheba? Oh, I think so. Are you? No. I'll pay homage at dinner. I've always admired the way Mrs. Levinson is never overawed by the whole setup at Downton. Was Napoleon overawed by the Bourbons? Ah, Ethel. I was just telling Lady Grantham how your cooking has come on. I'm studying, my lady. These days, a working woman must have a skill. But you seem to have so many. Little Rose, 18. Oh, how scary. Hello. It's quite a responsibility. Well, I couldn't say no. Her mother is my niece and my godchild, and she asked it as a special favour. Apparently, she hates London. And they can't get to Scotland until July. Poor Shrimpy. His work keeps him nailed to his desk. She hates London, so she's coming to a great aunt in Yorkshire to have a good time. Mm -hmm. How original. Are you sure about Rose? Wouldn't it be better if she stayed here? No, no, no. I'm quite looking forward to it. <laughs> I couldn't manage an 18-year-old. Not these days. I wouldn't know what she was talking about. Oh, my husband was a great traveller, so I've spent many happy evenings without understanding a word. The thing is to keep smiling and never look as if you disapprove. <laughs> How is Lady Fincher? Well, incredibly busy. Daddy works harder than a slave, and so she has to manage everything else by herself. I doubt he works harder than a slave. Cousin Isabel is very literal. Now, I have something for you. Shall I pour, ma'am? No, thank you. I'll do it. These. The first answers to the advertisement. Cousin Violet is trying to find a new job for my cook. <laughs> that sounds rather inconvenient. Cousin Violet has never let a matter of convenience stand in the way of a principle. As the kettle said to the pot. <laughs> I'm glad she's staying, but one forgets about parenthood, the on and onness of it. Were you a very involved mother with Robert and Rosamond? Does it surprise you? A bit. I'd imagine them surrounded by nannies and governesses being starched and ironed to spend an hour with you after tea. Yes, but it was an hour every day. I see, yes. I'm glad everything's settled with Ethel, but I trust you can find another cook without too much difficulty. Preferably one with a blameless record, so my house ceases to be a topic of gossip. Which is really what this is all about. Mm -hmm. If Ethel wants to be part of her son's life, even a little part, who are we to stand in her way? Of course, if you had had to sell Charlie to the butcher to be chopped up as stew to achieve the same ends, you would have done so. Well, happily, it was not needed. 